Did you sign up for a road race that was rescheduled and then switched over to a virtual race? Sound familiar? Let's talk virtual race debacles with the spotlight on Atlanta Track Club. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Run Wave Podcast. I am your host, Kim. If this is your first time here, welcome to the show. If you are a return listener, welcome back to the show. I appreciate you. It feels so good to be back home. I did a little bit of traveling in the COVID area, so I've been doing the Run Wave on the move. So this is my first show back in my domain and I'm happy to be here. There has been a lot going on in the running world in the past couple of weeks. You know, COVID has thrown racing into a frenzy and so many races have been canceled, have been rescheduled, have been postponed, have been flipped over to virtual races. And I am going to talk about one race in particular today, and that is the Peachtree Road Race that is put on by the Atlanta Track Club. So if you're not familiar with the Peachtree Road Race, because I know that I was not familiar with the race until my parents moved down to Atlanta. So the Peachtree Road Race is a race that happens every year on the 4th of July. It's been going on many, many years. And the race is huge. It's the largest 10K in the US. There's like 50,000 people that do this race every year. And I've done it for the last four years, I believe. (laughs) I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure I've done it for four years in a row. The first year I did the race, I purchased a bib off of someone else. So they allow a bib transfer. So if you find someone that could not do the race, you can pay a small fee and have their bib transferred from you to them, but you're stuck in whatever corral is on that bib. So how the race works is you submit your time. If you registered yourself early on, you submit your 10K time when you register and your place in corrals for the race. So my first year I purchased a bib off of someone. My second year I joined the Atlanta Track Club. I think it's like 25 or $30. And when you join Atlanta Track Club, you can register for the Peachtree Road Race and you don't have to go through the lottery. So, the third year and fourth year that I did the race, I just went through the regular old lottery system because I figured your race has 50,000 participants. How many people are you really turning down from the lottery? I mean, how many people are actually applying to this lottery? So the last two years I did the race, I just went in through the lottery and I got into the race okay. Many of you know that I am a New Yorker and you might think it's strange for me to go to Atlanta to do uh, 5k on the 4th of July but I'm always in Atlanta on the 4th of July anyway so I figured if I'm in Atlanta if there's a race happening I might as well do the race and get a medal out of it. The Peachy Bro race is probably <laughs> my least favorite race because the thing is hard it's a 10k but if you've run in Atlanta you know Atlanta is full of hills the first three miles are actually downhill but the last three miles minus the last quarter mile is like straight uphill and you're e- you even run up a hill called cardiac hill and I've never run up the hill because it literally can give you a heart attack it's like straight up steep hill I've walked up that hill every year Many people run that hill, I don't, but it is a tough course those last three miles. When I get to the end, I always say, why do I torture myself and do this race every single year? So I always say after I finish that this is the last year that I'm doing the race and I always end up registering for the race again anyway. I love torture. So being that COVID hit this year, I've been saying on this show over and over and over again that racing has been canceled. So when the Peachtree Road Race put out their email that the lottery was still happening, I was a little bit shocked about that. So they opened registration on March 15th and 
you have members can register between the 15th and the 31st of March and you non-members can enter the lottery to try to get in to the race now when I saw that they were doing the lottery amidst everything that was going on you know I DM my homegirl on Instagram that's in Atlanta and I said do you still see that Atlanta track club is going through with this lottery this has to be a money grab because they know they have to know that no racing is happening in 2020 I mean granted at that moment in time in March uh, the COVID cases in Georgia or Atlanta in particular were not that high but in New York City COVID was rampant. We were the epicenter of COVID. So I know that I wasn't registering for one race because registering for any race at this point in 2020 from March 1 is just basically giving your money away because you know that road racing was not happening. In March, we knew road racing wasn't happening. So I was shocked that they went through with this lottery. The caveat for this lottery was, I don't have the exact verbiage, but they did say if anything happens to the race, if it's canceled, postponed, whatever, then they would give a refund. So I think that that gave people a little bit of, I don't know, it made them feel better registering for that race, knowing that if something did happen, that they, they would get their money back which I thought was good because you, I mean, if you're having a lottery, I mean, I thought it was a money grab personally, but if you're having a, a lottery for a race that there's a 75% chance that that race isn't happening, you should give people their money back. On March 23rd, Atlanta Track Club put up a post on Instagram, I'm sure it was on Facebook as well and probably on their website. Um, someone sent it to me on Instagram and I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here. And it basically says, friends, actually it says verbatim, I'm going to read it and you can read it as well. Friends of the AGC Peachtree Road Race. The staff at Atlanta Track Club prides itself on having a plan for everything from dangerous for July 4th weather to to shirt shortages to a severe drought. We have learned to be prepared for anything, blah, blah, blah. Our communications to date have been created and delivered with the hope that we give Atlanta something to look forward to while still being respect respectful of the focus that everyone can and should have on their current physical, mental, and financial strength. So this is March 23rd, it goes on a little longer. I'll leave it up on the screen so you can read it. But Atlanta Track Club was bombarding us with emails. It was like a daily reminder to register for this race. They were pushing the race so hard and I never remembered it being so like in your face and just like pushing us to register for this race. It got so bad that I unsubscribed from their, from their emails because they were getting on my last freaking nerve. You don't need to register people every day to sign up for a lottery or to register for your race. It read a little desperate to me and it left a bad taste in my mouth especially during the time that we were in we were in the midst of COVID March 23rd I was in my freaking house I barely left the house in March so for them to keep bombarding people who are going through a trying time no matter where they are I mean Atlanta wasn't that bad but I'm sure there are people in Atlanta who have relatives elsewhere that were dealing with the pandemic we were in the thick of it then and I just thought it was in such poor taste that they were sending out these emails every single day reminding us to register for their race. No one was thinking about registering for a race that time. I mean, Atlanta Track Club, whoever is running your socials, your communication, y'all need to get it together because it was just in poor taste. You should do better. Okay, so remember the registration period was March 15th to the 31st. Now, on May 1st, Atlanta Track Club announced that the Peachtree Road Race would be moved to Thanksgiving. As soon as I read that shit, I do it on Instagram and DM my friend again like, do you see that Atlanta Track Club has moved this race to Thanksgiving? I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. Like y'all know that this race was not happening and you're gonna move it to Thanksgiving when you already have a yearly race that happens on Thanksgiving and it's part of your Triple Peach series. It made no sense. And the Peachtree Road Race is for the 4th of July. You don't run the Peachtree Road Race on Thanksgiving. So 
at that point, I thought, like, what is going on with Atlanta Track Club? They clearly know that the race is not going to. We all knew that the race, this is May 1st. We all knew that racing was canceled. This race was not happening. But y'all are still like saying, yeah, we're, we're holding out hope that we're going to have our race, our Peachtree Road race on Thanksgiving when it's supposed to be on July 4th. Like, come on, man. So at this point in time, when they made the announcement, it was also stated that you can receive a refund for your race registration, which I thought was great. I mean, you changed the race on me from July to Thanksgiving. I'm with my family on Thanksgiving. I don't have time to run a race on Thanksgiving. Although I used to do turkey trots on Thanksgiving, <laughs> but I don't do them anymore because I rather just lay in and, and eat or sometimes I cook and I eat. But yeah, you can't change a race to thanksgiving on people so they had to offer a refund at that time so at that point you could apply for a refund and get get your race feedback which was really good but they were pretty adamant that this race would take place on thanksgiving so those people that love to run the peachtree road race they stuck with atlanta track club and kept their registration going because they thought i don't know how they thought but some people thought that this race would still happen on thanksgiving i knew it was not happening because racing is canceled you heard me say it a thousand times now here's the kicker on august 19th the executive director and race director of the peach of atlanta track club and the race director of peach tree road race he put up a video on Instagram, on probably all their socials, I saw it on Instagram, that the race was turning virtual. <laughs> now, I'm laughing because it is so ridiculous. You said on May 1st that the race was moved to Thanksgiving. Then on August 19th, now the race is virtual. And let me tell you, <laughs> that video was a sorry state of affairs. I'm going to play a little bit of that video for you now. The Peachtree is going virtual. My name is Rich Kana. I am the executive director here at Atlanta Track Club and the race director of the AJC Peachtree Road Race. On May 1st, Atlanta Track Club announced that it was postponing the 51st running of the Peachtree from July 4th to blah, Thanksgiving blah, blah, Day. Blah, blah, blah. We did so after consulting I mean, with this... our medical branch. I'm not gonna play the whole thing. You can go on their Instagram page and check it out if you want to. But that video was just, it was so impersonal. And it was just like, so like, there was just no heart and no warmth in that video. It didn't make me have any confidence in that organization that what they were telling me was genuine. And let me tell you, people were pissed in their comments and they left the comments open and the comments are still up. So you can go on their page and check out the comments. And of course, I'm gonna give you some of the comments right here. Okay, I'm just going to read you a couple of the comments because these comments go on and on. People are pissed. So here's one. We've been given the runaround about this since early this year. It's upsetting because I know this is out of your circumstances due to COVID, but I had but had I known it would be virtual, I would have never agreed to this. I just feel like it should have never been said that we were doing the race on Thanksgiving. It's selfish. We could have just canceled the race from jump. I agree with her. Here's another comment. Stop trying to convince us that the virtual versions are better and don't deviate even further from what everyone knows the peach tree to be. Go support the race directors busting their butts to bring us in-person events. They are the ones that are going above and beyond. Now here's a good one, <laughs> a hundred percent. You waived the policy for refunds in May when I chose option one without any statements in the waiver or subsequent emailing that if we choose option one, we would forfeit our right to a refund if the, if the event didn't happen or went virtual, which was option two with a strict deadline to choose option two. It seems pretty straightforward. Allow those who want to run virtually to continue with the virtual race and those who did not 
N-O-T, capital N-O-T, sign up for the virtual race. The same thing as not getting what you paid for <laughs> to obtain a refund. Instead, your quote unquote team is making calls asking us to think of this as a donation. We all understand that it sucks to have to cancel and if it is for safety reasons, but not to but to not allow refunds at a time like this is awful. And she goes on and on, but this girl is pissed off and I'd be pissed off too. What I found in poor taste, whoever was responding to these comments was ridiculous that person needs to be fired and not on social media this is one of the comments that he responded to the last poster personally i like to look at this as an opportunity to experience a best in class virtual event what the f does that mean that's not part of the comment <laughs> i know it's not the peach tree in person i want it to be too but we have invested our time resources and registration fees y'all charge us for registration fees what registration fees did you invest back to the comment <laughs> into something much more than shirt delivery your shirt sucks also i'll get into that <laughs> i'd offer to call you and talk more that's what i have been doing all day although i don't believe i talked to your husband so now he's calling her a liar that her husband never spoke to anyone but it seems like you don't want me to do that. I read that like this. <laughs> However, if you change your mind, send us a DM and I'll give you my cell phone number. Sign Jay. Jay, you have some mother effing nerve <laughs> to call this girl a liar saying that you didn't speak to her husband. How do you know that you didn't speak to her husband? Why would she need to lie about that when other people have also said that you made phone calls? Why? Does she need to lie about that? I mean, listen, y'all. <laughs> I would, I would go look up who this Jay was and send him a nice, nasty email cursing his ass out because you got some effing nerve. So as you can see, people are not happy with what Atlanta Track Club is doing. Yes, it's commendable that they offer the refund in March when they switched the date. And I mean, if it was me, if I was registered, I probably would have took the refund in March because we knew that this race wasn't happening. But for those that held out hope, they stuck by you, Atlanta Track Club, and now you're screwing them by not giving them a refund at this time. Granted, it may have been in the fine print that if you don't accept the refund now and this race goes virtual, you're not getting any money back. Just because it was in the fine print doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. So y'all got to do something and do better by the people that have supported you and supported this race all of these years. Now, one of the things that is really irking me about Atlanta Track Club is they keep touting that they're a nonprofit and your registration fees go to supporting this nonprofit. Let me read you a little bit what they say verbatim. I'm just gonna look to the side because I don't have it on my phone, so I'm just gonna read it from my computer here. So it says, additionally, as a nonprofit, the registration fees from the AJC Peachtree Road Race are integral to the club's mission of a healthier Atlanta through running and working. Your support will allow Atlanta Track Club to continue providing accessibility to the, to the sport to all who seek it and will ensure Atlanta Track Club is prepared to host the 52nd running of the AJC Peachtree Road Race on July 4th, 2021. So they're saying they're a nonprofit and we need your race registration fees to keep Atlanta Track Club going. Now, let me decide where I want my fees to go. It is not up to you to say that we're keeping your fees because we're a nonprofit and it keeps us going. I can choose to donate money in addition to my race fees. I can donate money to your organization if you asked. Give me the option to do what I choose to do with my money. This is a trying time. I read in your comments, a woman even said that I had three, she said three or four registrations. I'll find it and I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. But she said, I registered for my whole family. 
I need to get my money back. This is ridiculous. And you guys are just not doing the right thing by your people. So being that Atlanta Track Club is a nonprofit, their tax returns are public information. So since Atlanta Track Club needs your money for registration fees because they're a nonprofit, let me tell you what they're paying their executives. I'm gonna put that up on the screen. So I couldn't find the 2019 return, but this is the 2018 tax return. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six executives listed. One is listed as a board member. She has a zero salary uh, on the return. Uh, Rich Kina. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It was the guy in that video. He's the executive director. In 2018, his reportable compensation from the organization was $268,684. Additionally, he had estimated amount of other compensation from the organization and related organizations $37,315. I'm not sure what that extra money is. It could be for reimbursed expenses. I don't know. It doesn't say. But in total, he received $290 plus thousand dollars, almost $300,000 from Atlanta Track Club in 2018. Uh, the next executive, Chris Deekers. Dear Kess, I don't know. He's the finance director. 135,796 was his compensation, and he received an additional 31,443. I don't know what the additional is. Could be bonuses again, reimbursed expenses. I'm not sure. Next executive, Lisa McMahon, Director of Business Development. She received $234,082 and $14,610 in additional compensation. Then you have Jason Holder, Director of Marketing. He received $111,499, $15,763 in additional compensation. Lastly, we have Lisa Tanner, Director of Events. She received $100,930 and 7,341 in additional compensation. Total salaries, $850,991 and an additional $106,472. So almost a million dollars, $956,000 in total, total salaries went to the executives of Atlanta Track Club in 2018. I don't know where those numbers are in 2019. So the Atlanta Track Club executives are living quite well. <laughs> So I'm wondering, for 2020 salaries, are you all taking a smaller salary? How is that working out for you executives that you're keeping registration fees for uh, your nonprofit organization? Let us know. Now, the tax returns are public record. I didn't go digging for them. I Googled Atlanta Track Club executive salaries and boom, the records came up. You can even see what Atlanta Track Club has made over the years. If you want to dig deeper into the tax return, you can to see where their money has gone, who they're donating to, etc. Um, I'll upload that onto my website so you can click on that and you can see the link. Um, it is projects.propublica.org so you can go to that website and search Atlanta Track Club Inc and they will pull up all of the financials for ATC so you can see exactly where the money is going that they're reporting on their tax returns just an FYI because they're asking to keep your money for fees and I just want to know where their money is going now I didn't make this episode to bash Atlanta Track Club but I'm just sick and tired of these races flipping over to virtuals and not giving people the option of refund. Yes, you guys gave the refund early. We appreciate that. But the people that stuck with you and ride it out this, you know, this awful time that we're going through, 
they deserve to be compensated if they don't want to participate in a virtual race. And I don't even want, if I was registered, I don't want your t-shirt Atlanta track club, that Mizuno cotton blend shirt sucks. It's too big. I get an extra small and the thing still doesn't fit. It's not moisture wick and I can see my sweat through it. I don't want that t-shirt. The only Atlanta track club t-shirt that I kept is the one from my boy, Michael Martinez. That's the only shirt I kept. You charge people additional for the metal. Yes, they charge you additional for the metal. It's like an additional $15 and get this. This is the only race that I've ever done that you pick up your medal at the expo. Isn't that ridiculous? One year I forgot to pick up the medal because who picks up the medal at the freaking expo? That is like the most asinine ass backwards thing that any race can do. One year I forgot about the medal and I didn't think about it until I got to the finish line and I said, oh shit, I forgot to pick up the medal at the expo. And of course there's no medals at the finish line so I had to email them and they were nice enough to mail me the medal. But who picks up the medal at the race expo? It's, it's just, I always thought that it was the most dumbest thing I've ever seen at an expo with a race. And they're also backwards because they give the t-shirts at the finish line because they want to reveal their t-shirt design to the world at the finish line. Also ridiculous that you pick up your t-shirt at the finish line. I mean, come on. I mean, I've done the race for four years. I don't particularly like it, but I do it because it's something to do on the 4th of July. Last year was actually the only year I enjoyed the post-race festivities because they had ice pops at the finish line this year. Usually you get a bottle of hot ass Dasani water. I hate Dasani, it's filtered and disgusting. If I'm gonna buy a bottle of water, I'm gonna get spring water. New York Road Runners gives Poland spring at the finish line. <laughs> but they gave hot Dasani every year and a box of like chips and shit, shit that runners don't need. We need recovery foods we need fruit we need stuff that's going to replenish what we just ran out in this 6.2 miles so yeah this last year was the first year that they had icicles that actually cooled me down and felt good and um the water was actually cool last year as well um the finish line party they also give you if you're an Atlanta track club member you can get into this tavern and you get like two uh cans of beer I don't drink beer, so that's like not a plus for me, but I hang out with my friends after the race while they're drinking beer. I drink my hot water <laughs> and that's it. So, I mean, I'm the uh, Atlanta track club, Peachtree Row Race. It's just an to me. It's like, I don't know what the big deal is and probably mostly everyone else that's in Atlanta. This is probably your first time hearing about this race because it's really not a big deal, but do better by your people and if you're registered for peachy road race and you ride you rode out this thing with Atlanta track club and you're stuck with not getting a refund and you don't want to do a virtual take your comments to the internet write something about this we keep these organizations going they don't keep us going we support them year after year we constantly do their events we're giving them our hard-earned money and when it's time for them to return the favor and do right by us they're not doing it so it's time for us to support the little guys in atlanta you have running nerds it's a small business black owned tess owns running nerds she puts on the race which is the first black owned for us by us race it's a half marathon at 5k um she puts it on every year she's a small company she's a race director and she's in atlanta give your money to running nerds instead since atlanta track club doesn't want to do right by you there are smaller race directors everywhere that we can be supporting in new york city we have pace runs they're a small company they're black owned and they're putting on races for us and our community. So we don't need to support these large races. We don't need them, they need us. Keep that in mind. Y'all know I'm heated about this, right? <laughs> the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the New York City Marathon. Y'all know that I was ranting about the New York City Marathon. Like, if they didn't give me a refund, I'm not doing a damn New York City Marathon again. But, you know, they did put out the refund options. We had to make a choice by August 15th. 
I went for the refund because you know what? Number one, that's $255. That's a lot of freaking money for a race. Number two, I've run a New York City Marathon four times already. I don't really need to run it again. I only wanted to run it this year in 2020 because it was the 50th anniversary of the race and it would have been nice to get, you know, be a part of the 50th and, you know, that's a history making race. And, you know, New York uh, Roadrunners gave us the option to register they gave everyone a refund but we had the option to register for the virtual 26.2 race new york city marathon 26.2 virtual i'm not doing anyone's 26.2 virtual race <laughs> so that's like just never going to be an option for me um i also went for the refund because if you stayed in the race there was no guarantee if you would be able to run 2021. So they said um, the options were 21, 22, or 23. There was no option for us to pick which year we wanted to run the race. Uh, the verbiage that they used was, it was kind of their choice as to what year we would run. Because, I mean, quite honestly, I don't even know if racing is gonna happen in 2021. I hope it is, but at the rate we're going they may not be racing in 2021 so instead of having an atlanta track club situation because i didn't read the fine print but it could very well say the same thing that if you don't take this refund now you might not get this refund later so i just opted to get the refund um if i want to run it again in the future then i'll either do nine plus one or you know i'll fi i'll get a registration somehow <laughs> But you know, I'm glad that New York Roadrunners was upfront about the options. They told us upfront that if you don't take this refund, you might not get 2021. You can get 22 or 23. We're gonna reassess the situation when we get there. I didn't read into the fine print. If someone is out there that read into the fine print, let me know if a refund is available down the line if 2021 doesn't happen, but I hope it does. And I'm registered for London as well, 2021, which has been moved to October. That's another reason why I um, opted for the refund because I really don't wanna run a marathon in October and then one a few weeks later in November. Running marathons is hard on the body, especially for someone like me. I don't, I'm not a super fast runner and, shit 26.2 miles hurts <laughs> you know it's it's only fun for those people that are running five minute miles and they're finishing in like three hours for us five hour folks it's not fun running 26.2 miles we just do it for the joy and the thrill of the run i'm not doing it for fun so hopefully you know things will get better in 2021 and we will race again cross your fingers that's all for this episode of the run wave podcast i hope you enjoyed the show and hopefully i didn't rant <laughs> on it or too long because y'all know how i feel about these doggone virtual races man i'm just i'm not feeling it i want to race in person i don't want to run virtually by myself and all of my training these last few months has been alone i haven't run with one single group i haven't done any double runs with like a friend I've done nothing the last few months I have run every run alone so I don't want to do any more running alone if I don't have to <laughs> but in other news I do have a brand new podcast the run wave is still going strong but my friend Donetta and I have started a new show called late twins experience and you will get so much fun on this show when we get together is just like a ball of laughs and we call it the late twins experience because people always tell us that we look alike we have that almond shape eye and you know high cheekbone things going so late twins experience the first episode is live now we are going to drop an episode every monday and it's just gonna be a lot of fun. So subscribe to the show. I'll put all the details on the screen and 
in the show notes and on my website and you know follow us on instagram the ig is lay le twins with an s experience we're on twitter lay twins exp experience was too long and we're on facebook as well lay twins experience and check out our website lay twins experience.com because it is super fly so that's it for this episode of the runway podcast i want to thank you for listening and thank you for continuing to support this show i really appreciate all of you that have been listening commenting on the post liking the post and let's just keep this ride going if you have a topic that you want me to talk about send me an email you can send it to hello at therunwave.com or send it to kim at therunwave.com i'm the runwave so i get all the emails (laughs) no matter what email address you send it to so if you want to chat about something send it to me if you want to be on the show send me send me an email as well i would love to hear from you so i will catch you guys on the next one later tell folks thank you so much for tuning into the show be sure to subscribe to the run wave on your favorite podcast app and leave us a review of the show on apple Podcasts. it would really help me out if you are a runner that has a story to tell and you would like to be on the show you can email hello at the runwave.com or send us a dm on instagram to the run wave see you next time Yeah.